that's all that's involved in doing a chair flip. You're taking the headrest and moving it down to be the footrest. And you're taking the footrest and moving it up to be the headrest. Now, usually people don't really see that that clearly. And the reason is because the reason it's so easy to see the chair flip here is because I've drawn the seat of the chair horizontally. Whereas normally people draw the seat of the chair kind of at an angle over here. And, and you really should do that. You, you can't get the axial and equatorial correct if you draw it like this. So these are not good pictures to use for problem solving. These are not good pictures for problem solving because you won't get the positions of the axial and the equatorial substituents right. You can see there's kind of no way to draw something axial and equatorial here. But this is a good way to visualize the chair flip. Okay. Um, so here, notice what we're doing when we go from here to here. This is the point that's the headrest. Mm -hmm. And this is the point that's the footrest. And if we want to do a chair flip, we need to take the headrest and make it into the footrest, pointing down. And we need to take the footrest and make it into the headrest. And the key thing to keep in mind is that these are the same carbon. It just went from head to foot. And these are the same carbon. So the point is, keep your eye on the rightmost carbons and the leftmost carbons, because they're the same in both pictures. These are the two rightmost carbons, so they're the same. And these are the two leftmost carbons, so they're the same in uh, both pictures. So let's try to do a chair flip over here. Let's try to flip this chair and see what it would look like after it flips. Well, actually, I think I'll just show you how to do that. So here we start with this. Now notice this is a case where the headrest was on the right and the footrest was on the left. I didn't draw this as well as I could have, but here I have the headrest on the right. I want to do the chair flip here. I'm going to take the headrest and turn it into the footrest. So these are the same carbon. So they should both have a chlorine. Now, in this picture, was the chlorine pointing up or down? Now, I know it's not pointing straight up or straight down, but is it pointing kind of up or kind of down? It's pointing up. The chlorine? Oh, no, pointing. Yeah, the chlorine is pointing down. Not straight down, but kind of down. Well, up and down doesn't change when you do chair flips. So the chlorine here would be pointing down. Here's the down position on the footrest. All right, now let's take a look at this methyl group here. Uh, and by the way, um, so we can see if this is our number one carbon, and this is the number two, this must be the number two carbon over here, because you can see the number two is counterclockwise from the number one. So here's the number two counterclockwise from the number one. Is the methyl group here pointing up or down? Yeah. So I have to draw the methyl pointing down over here. Although notice that means now it's equatorial. That's the whole point of the chair flip. It flips axial and equatorial. OK, and then is this hydrogen pointing up or down? It's pointing, uh, pointing up. Yeah, that's a little hard to see, but it's certainly more up than the methyl, right? Every carbon has one thing that's pointing down and one thing that's pointing up. Well, this is clearly pointing down, so this is pointing up. So here's the hydrogen. Now, have we succeeded? Can we do an E2 in this case? Are the hydrogen and the chlorine now anti-periplanar? Mm -hmm. OK. So if you started with this configuration, the base here would like to attack the more substituted beta carbon. It can't attack this conformation because it's not anti-periplanar. So it just waits a millisecond for a chair flip. And then when the chair flip puts the, puts the two things anti, now it's going to attack this beta hydrogen over here. In fact, this picture is this picture over here. So then we get this reaction over here where we attack the beta hydrogen. OK. So again, if something is not originally anti-periplanar, you can flip or rotate uh, to make it anti-periplanar. OK. So that gives us uh, that result over here. Uh, and so then we would end up with the double bond uh, over here. OK. Now.
This looks similar, but this is still a different starting material. Mm -hmm. Again, we're going to get an E2. Again, we'd like to attack the more substituted beta carbon, not the less substituted. Um, now, can we, do, can we do an E2 with this chair flip? Are we ready for an E2 yet? No. No, we're not ready for an E2 yet, because the hydrogen is not anti-periplanar to the chlorine. So you might try doing a chair flip. But uh, we can actually, you don't even have to draw that. Will a chair flip make, this, make these anti-periplanar? Well, in the starting material is the chlorine axial or equatorial. So what will it be after we flip it? But we already said equatorial things can never be anti-periplanar. So even without doing the chair flip, we can see that the chair flip won't help us here. The chair flip won't help. Ah, I think I'll draw that just to make that crystal clear. <coughs> Remember, the chlorine here is on the footrest. So if you did the chair flip, it would end up on the headrest. Um, and in the starting material, the chlorine is pointing down. So after the chair flip, it should still be pointing down. So this is what we would look like after the chair flip. And the methyl is pointing up in the starting material, so the methyl should be pointing up after the chair flip. And you can see this hasn't done us any good. They, these are still not anti, because this is axial and this is equatorial. And again, there's no way to be anti unless they're both axial. So what's the upshot? The upshot is that in this case, there is no way for the base to take this hydrogen. And like I say, this is actually a very popular type of exam question that you're pretty likely to see. They like to do E2 with chair cyclohexane. Um, and to see when you can tell, when you can take beta hydrogens and when you can't. Um, so we've seen in the past that usually, even if a beta hydrogen is not anti, usually you can flip or rotate to make it anti. But now we're seeing that with chair cyclohexane, there are some situations where it's impossible to make the beta hydrogen um, anti. All right, so what would this do? Well, it's going to have to attack the hydrogens over here. It's going to have to take this hydrogen, because this is anti to the chlorine, and then we'll form the double bond over here basically. Okay, um, not over here. All right, so that's the upshot uh, of that without idea. Without a ring flip. Pardon? Without a ring flip. That's right, because they're all already anti to each other. These are already anti to each other. And again, if we did a ring flip, E2 couldn't work because the chlorine wouldn't be axial anymore. So that's an important principle. Um, you can only do E2 if both the beta hydrogen and the chlorine are axial, uh, are, 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 are anti to each other. And that means they both have to be axial. So you can kind of see um, if one of them starts axial and one of them starts equatorial, there's no way we'll ever get both of them to be axial. The reason that we can't do E2 with this hydrogen is it's equatorial and this is axial. Well, if we did the chair flip, this chlorine would be equatorial and this would be axial. So um, here we can do the E2 because they're both axial. Or if they both started equatorial, we could do a chair flip and that would make them both axial. But if, if the leaving group starts out in axial and the hydrogen starts out equatorial or vice versa, no chair flip is going to help you to get the anti. All right, so that was the big uh, lesson of uh, this question over here. All right, that's a lot of work just to understand that. But now we can see how we can use that to get the answers to C and D in the questions that you, um, that you sure. talked about. Okay. is to predict the product. The question is to predict the product. Uh, so we can go through this together. Uh, we would expect an E2 again, um, because we've got a secondary and a strong base. So um, let's identify the beta carbons. There's only one methyl group up here. That was just a smudge. So there's one methyl group on this carbon and one chlorine down here. 
All right, so let's label the beta hydrogen. 